How is it going, everybody? What's going on? And welcome back to another Pi Game Python programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to call back to one of the earlier concepts we were talking about in a previous video, and that's all about collision. And um, earlier we were looking at collision detection, then we were looking at collision resolution, and that sort of thing, and we actually have that working just fine in our gravity kind of platformer example that we have working. Um, I can jump up and down, and I can collide with these blocks. Now, that's using the arrow keys to move, but earlier I had a video that I would move with the mouse. And I, I can't really demonstrate it right now, but um, there was some mouse movement work that we had going on. And I, I didn't explain or show how we can use mouse movement and still have the collision effect that we wanted to. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can do that. So, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, the thing is, earlier we were using the uh, rect.x and uh, the position of the actual block itself to determine where we should be aligned with the mouse. And in this example, we're going to be changing it up a bit so that we're actually using the H speed and V speed. And that is what will determine uh, whether or not we're actually aligned with the mouse or not. I'm not going to be using the origin. I'm not going to be using that at all because I, I just haven't figured out a good way to actually implement that. Boom! How's it going, everybody? Uh, I'm talking to you right now from the future, thanks to the wonderful power of video editing. Uh, I just wanted to shove in a quick notice. Uh, at the very end of the video, I do end up showing you how to use the origin um, X and Y values that can uh, kind of change the position of where our object is with the mouse. Um, so kind of disregard the fact that I say I am ignoring this. I do show it to you at the very end of the video. Awesome! See you soon! So I'm kind of going to disregard the origin, but uh, we're just going to do stuff and it's going to happen. Okay, um, I also realize this is indented a little bit more than it needs to be. I can fix that. Okay, so the way that we do this, first of all, is uh, we can go ahead and... Uh, first, I'm going I'm to go ahead and save this as a different file name. I'm going to call mine um, just mouseother.py because uh, I want to keep this same file, the current one that we had, and just use this as a different one, because I'm going to make a, a few drastic changes here. And when I say drastic, I mean I'm going to completely chop out the event handling loop and uh, at least conditional statements inside the player object, uh, the block object in this case, in its update function. I'm going to chop all of that out, and I'm also going to chop out the experience gravity function, and we don't have to have that call at the beginning of the update function itself. Now, back down at the very bottom of the program with the event loop, in the main function, essentially, we don't need to reset the event, and we don't even need to pass it into the update function at all. Now, if I run the program, hopefully I don't have any errors, I might have overlooked something, but okay, very simply, now our block is just in place. Uh, it doesn't move, nothing's happening, it's just kind of there. Now, let's set up the control for actually moving with the mouse. The way that I'm going to do this is by setting up um, change with the H speed and V speed. And I'm going to do that by going over to the update function in the block itself. And I'm going to have a call to the mouse.getPosition function. And I'm going to store what that returns, remember it returns a tuple, in variables called mouseX and mouseY pygame.mouse.getPos or get position. Okay, now at the very bottom of all this, before the for loops, I'm going to test... Uh, I'm going to look at my notes here to make sure I've got this okay. If the mouse x is equal to self.rect.x, then self.hspeed is going to equal 0. Otherwise, we're going to change up self.hspeed. Now, I'm going to try and explain this, but it's not going to make much sense at all until you actually see it happening. But, if the mouse x is equal to the rect x, which means that if the mouse is at the current position of the object itself, it's not going to move in the horizontal direction at all. H speed is going to equal zero. Now, if the mouse x is not is at any other position other than the object's x value, we're going to change the h speed to equal um, the difference. And when I say the difference, I mean mouse x minus self dot rect x. Now, whether or not this is positive or negative, it's still going to kind of move to the position of uh, 
of the mouse x. Now we can copy and paste this and do this for the y variable, and of course change it to be v speed. Now if I run this program, we'll have a bit of a different kind of setup. I can move this around very easily. Remember, I'm not taking part of the origin. And I also have slight collision detection because h-speed is what's being manipulated whenever um, we actually test for collisions. h-speed and v-speed, those, those speed variables. But you'll notice something. If I move my mouse further than the size of the object itself past the collision, then, for some reason, it'll jump right to the other side. Now, we don't want this. We want to keep the collision happening no matter what, because you, you're not supposed to just be able to just kind of clip through the objects you're colliding with, especially if you're moving around with the mouse. So, the way that we do this is by setting up some tests and actually determining what way we are colliding with things. So over at the top of the update function, underneath the mouse x and mouse y set, uh, setting in the definition, I'm going to create a few new variables, and I'm going to call them colliding left, and that's going to equal colliding right, which is going to equal colliding up, which is going to equal colliding down, and all of these are going to equal false. I'm just using the equals 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 syntax, so all of them equal uh, false all in one line. Okay. Now, because we have these nice little comments here that tell us when we're actually colliding in what direction, we can go ahead and very easily say, okay, colliding right now is going to be true. And, of course, colliding left is going to equal true over here, and that sort of thing. And we'll do the same exact thing for um, down and up. Colliding down equal true. And colliding up can equal true over here. If we run the code, nothing is going to really visually change because all we're doing is just adding the variables. Uh, I <laughs> I meant to show that to you and I actually pressed escape before the program even finished. But yeah, see, there is no change really. We have to account for it in our conditional statements. I'm going to do it in the else statements because that's really where all the things happen. At least resetting the position. Okay, now, I said earlier there is a change, there is a difference in what happens. Mouse x minus self.rec.x or mouse y minus self.rec.y. So I'm going to call that change. Change is equal to that. Now, the kind of, the mindset that we had with our collision testing actually testing if v speed is coming from one direction or not, whether or not it's up or down, we're going to kind of have that same mindset um, even for the mouse collision detection that we're doing right now. We're going to test if we're colliding to the left or if we're colliding to the right. And if we are, then okay, that means we cannot move in the direction that we're actually colliding in. So we're going to test for the opposite direction with change. If we're moving to the left, if we're colliding to the left side of the object, then that means we can't move anything that is actually to the left of us because we're already colliding in that direction. So we have to be able to see changes that only occur, sorry, that only occur in the right direction, moving to the right. And that means that change has to be positive. So we'll only allow for change to happen if change is greater than zero, or if it's positive. In that case, self.hspeed can equal change. You guys see how that works? The same thing happens, at least vice versa, with the right direction. If we're already colliding in the right direction, then we can't move to the right anymore. We have to move to the left, which means that change will have to be negative. Awesome. Now let's set the same sort of thing up for the vertical direction. Get into our else statement here. Set change to equal the difference that we actually have, and we'll test, okay, if we're colliding up, that means that change has to be positive, and v-speed is going to equal change, and if we're colliding down, that means that change must be negative, and v-speed will then equal change. Now if we run this program, it'll only change if we're in the corresponding way. Um, I must have done something wrong here, because right now it's not working. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this here. 
Okay, I do see the problem. This is actually only happening. <laughs> it won't let us move at all because none of these things are true yet. So we actually kind of have to change the way that our if statements are working. I'm actually going to say if colliding left can be first. And then this if colliding right, that's going to be using an L if statement for else if. And if none of these things are true, well, then we obviously aren't colliding with anything. So we still want to account for any of the changes in the mouse movement. H speed can equal change. We'll do the same thing with the vertical direction with uh, V speed and Y. Else self dot V speed is going to equal change. Okay, now when we run this code, now we'll see it happen. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll drag the program up and I can keep moving with the mouse. And the moment I collide, I can keep moving further and further and further with my mouse, but I'm still colliding. Awesome. Now the moment I move past it, move and I, I release it, I jump right over to that other side because H speed and V speed are being set appropriately. Oh, okay, it looks like it looks like V speed isn't working for us. We must have done something wrong there. Colliding up, colliding down. Okay, so I did some quick experimenting with this and uh, if I run it like I like I just showed you beforehand, the uh, up and down will not work at the moment. And I realized that this is because of some code that we left from the earlier collision detection. Um, earlier, when we were testing for all the colliding objects in the collision list, every time we were colliding with up or down, because of gravity, we set V speed equal to zero. Now that gravity doesn't exist, we can just kind of go ahead and, and cross out this command here, the, the statement. And if we were to run the code now, V speed does uh, not actually have anything that happens with that other setup so v speed will work the, in the correct way that we want it to whether or not we're colliding up or down and the mouse keeps moving of course we had h speed working beforehand so this works perfectly fine for us everything is working as expected we have collision with the mouse movement that we were using beforehand awesome it it works guys <laughs> don't know what to tell you other than that it works thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this and i'll uh, i'll see you in the next tutorial Hey, sorry everybody. Uh, I realize again that I am making a mistake at the very end of the video. Uh, in this case, I do want to show you that I, 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 you can actually implement the origin kind of concept and idea that we had uh, in, in previous videos. All it takes is a very simple subtraction. I notice in my set position function, all we're doing is actually taking the x value and then subtracting the origin x or y. And you know, we can do that exact same thing with our change variable. Over here in the testing for the new um, mouse coordinates, we can, of course, subtract self.origin x. And, you know, for the y value, you can, of course, subtract self.origin y. And uh, what do you know? This will have the exact same output and kind of result that we really kind of expected with the origin, of course, being in the center or wherever we put it in our object. So very, very simple. All it takes is a subtraction sign. <laughs> I'm sorry I did not include that earlier, but I just realized after I finished recording and now you know how to do it. Simple stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.